Welcome to Pro 31 Speaks. Today I'm going to make strawberry jam. And we've talked a little bit about that between the difference of jams, jellies, and preserves in previous videos, but I'll go over that quickly. A jelly is when you cook down the fruit and you reserve the juice so that the jelly is clear. You run everything through cheesecloth or a good sieve. And then jam has bits and pieces of chopped fruit in it that you can squish really small. But preserves are most likely nearly the whole fruit with, of course, seeds and cores taken out and the leaves taken off. And then that is preserved. Today I'm going to use the no sugar or low sugar variety of the Serto brand of pectin. Once you open the box, it's great because they give you instructions. And today I'm going to do a cooked jam. But I want you to read the instructions yourself. There's a freezer jam recipe on here, a no sugar recipe, jam, jelly, and preserves. So be very careful when you're reading these instructions. Make sure you get the right set of instructions as there's some on the back as well. I've gone ahead and measured out. I needed 12 cups of fresh fruit. Well, I do that in the summertime. So I have it frozen and I know how much it is. Once I bag it in three cup measures, I already have my smashed fruit. So you'd start with 12 cups of fresh fruit and then it would smash down to about half of that, six cups. You can fill in with a little bit of apple juice, but get an exact measure on that. Mine goes to six cups of smashed juice and fruit, strawberries. You'll need four cups of sugar, and they're very specific with this cooked jam. I needed to reserve a quarter of a cup of the sugar, which I'll put right in here. And then I have to mix that with the pectin from the Serto package. It looks a little bit like jello with the sugar removed. So once I mix in the sugar, it'll look a lot like an unflavored gelatin. Moving over to the stove here. I want to show you, I want to show you the different things you will need to be ready. Besides the fruit, which is pretty straightforward, you're going to need something to keep your hands from being burnt. You'll need a ladle to scoop out the hot prepared jam, a nice heavy spoon. I like to use my stainless steel one for my grandma. And I like to use wide mouth jars. And the difference between a wide mouth and a regular mouth jar is the regular mouth jar is a little bit thinner. Not, uh, pardon me, a little bit more narrow. I like it because I can make sure I can get all the jelly in there. I don't have to worry about that lip that comes over like that cuts in. I can measure it pretty well. I like to use a collapsible funnel. That way it just stays in my preserve and jelly drawers and I don't have to deal with it taking up a lot of space. Funnels take up a lot of space because of their odd shape. I don't fight with that anymore. You have to have the correct lids with rubber seal. It's already attached. Make sure that they're clean and sterilized and their associated rim. Once the jam goes inside the hot jars, which we will heat. Oh, look at me, my dishwasher didn't do a nice job. Then you put the rims over that and seal it down. You'll need a good heavy pot. On the back, I have a quart and a half pot filled with water and it's heating up. That's going to continue to sterilize the lids and the rims for when we can. I like to set my stove then on an even temperature of about 175 to 200. And once that heats up, then I'm going to place my jars inside there. They'll be hot. My jam will be hot when I'm done cooking it. And the lids will be hot. This will ensure a seal. Specific for strawberry cooked jam. Remove and discard the strawberry stems and crush the fruit. I'll end up with six cups of crushed strawberries and four cups of sugar. A total of eight cups will result from that as the sugar dissolves down in. It's really important to follow this recipe. Do not reduce the sugar from your recipe at this point. Look for the low sugar recipe specifically 
And again, make sure you get the pink box if you're trying to reduce the sugar in your jams and jellies. At this point, I already combined a quarter of a cup of the sugar with the sheer gel going in. So first tell you to put your fruit and this quarter cup of sugar and the pectin in a bowl. But then they tell you to cook it. So I use my liquid cup measure to go ahead and measure the fruit and what is the resultant juice. And I use another container to go ahead and put the pectin and the sugar in. But then I go right to my pot. I don't bother with the bowl first and then coming to the cooking pot. Because from this point, they want us to cook it to a rolling boil. And we'll show you what a rolling boil looks like. But as far as its description, it's when you're stirring it and you can't make the boiling go away. You've probably seen it with pasta or if you're cooking some potatoes and you stir vigorously, but you can't seem to get it to stop boiling up over the top in the bowl. All right, now my setup's changed quite a bit. I've gone ahead and put the pectin, the quarter cup of sugar I mixed it with, along with the strawberries into my pot. I kept scraping the sides with the spoon, not necessarily with a rubber spatula. I say rubber because I'm not a young lady anymore. Your silicone spatula. They used to be made of rubber. Anyway, so I've moved to that. Look at how neat this little spoon is completely made for that. I usually go ahead and put a pie pan out of some sort. That'll help me catch all the drippy utensils I'll use. The water's come up to a boil, and I brought it down to a simmer now so that I can begin to finish sterilizing the lids and making them nice and hot for when the seal is finished. I'll take a little moment here to show you. This is what the foam they're talking about. You'll have a little bit more. I did not use butter. I don't prefer to do that. I'll skim a little bit of the foam off of the top once I've added the rest of the sugar at the rolling boil. And at that point, we cook it for a solid minute at the rolling boil. One thing I do want to point out to new cookers, cookers, listen, people who are just looking into cooking and canning, the handles are turned away from the front so no one can walk across the stove and hit something and then hurt themselves. So while this is boiling, I'm going to pay attention to it because I don't want it to stick to the bottom. It will stick to the bottom because, well, sugars tend to cook to candy. Yeah, I don't want candy. I want to make sure that I only have jam today. I wanted to show you that beautiful rolling boil so you'll get to understand what it looks like. And I've been constantly stirring this and keeping a close eye on it. You do not walk away from jams, jellies, anything you're cooking with sugar. It will just burn. I'll say ruin a pot, sure, because most people don't want to take the effort to go ahead and clean that pot. I have a couple of fans going now to take some of the steam away from what you're seeing. I'm going to go ahead and take that three and three quarters cup of sugar. I'm going to move that back and forth and get that incorporated rather quickly. And this boil will not stop. And I'm going to watch my timer for one minute there to the minute at this rolling boil. I'll make sure that I'm touching the bottom with this. Probably a better idea anyway so I can scrape the sides without all that noise to you. And as we wait for that minute to transpire. Now, don't hold me to it. You know I edit my videos. So if you say that wasn't a minute, well most likely I've edited it. So I know we're all grown ups mostly and at least emotionally, and we can handle that my video won't be a minute of watching me stir at the full rolling boil. This will become very thick and stick to everything now that I have the sugar and the pectin together. So you'll want to wash your utensils and your bowls and pots immediately after canning. You don't want this to set up. It'll take a long time to clean. I'm just going to stir it up just a little bit more. Get the foam off and then I'm going to set up the cans. We'll see what I do to can. Then you're almost ready to have your own jam or jelly. With the jam all set and prepared in the pan, I've gone ahead and I've moved all of my preparatory utensils right next to me. I'll be setting the hot jars right here. I'll fill them. I'll take the lids and seal it 
and then I'll place them to cool for 24 hours over here on this doubled up heavy duty towel. It's important to use a towel that you don't care about or one that'll easily take care of stains through the wash. All right, let's get started. My oven, I've had the jars in here for about 20 minutes at 200 degrees to finish a sterilization process that I started by washing with hot soap and water, rinsing with very hot water, and then not drying, I put them right in here. The water will evaporate and they're essentially dry jars. These are very hot. Do not fool around with them without extra towels nearby. Put the funnel right inside there. You want to stir up your fruit and your juice because it will settle a little bit in between moving from the pan to the jars. Be very careful. This is hot. This is worse than hot water because sugars will boil at a higher boil rate. Now, as I'm filling, I want to leave about a half inch at the top. Often I freeze my jam. When I don't have room, I make sure everything is perfect, all hot, and they get perfectly sealed. Because I freeze them, I do leave what's called head space. Normally it's already supposed to be a half inch on anything that you can. What I do next is I take a piece of paper towel, make sure I have clean hot water, and I wipe the top. To get the best seal, you want to make sure you have no food, nothing on that. Then I have to go and take a hot lid and a hot rim. I use tongs and I shake them off. They don't have to be dry. Make sure that I don't get any fruit on those tongs. They're only for the water bath. And here's our tricky trickster. Make sure you do not do this with bare hands, unless somehow you have some sort of strange asbestos in you. These have to be on tight, so make sure you have a good tight seal down on that. I move it to the towel, and I cover it with the towel. Once I get all four in, four of these pints, then I'll make sure all the sides are covered as well. I have one more lid that didn't fit into this pot, so I'm going to put it in. It has to come back up to a boil so it becomes hot and ready to seal. And now it's time to put our jam to bed for 24 hours. Cover it up and let it rest and cool off. If you noticed, I kept the jars real close to each other. It keeps the heat working together and it helps form a better seal. Now, just a few things before I let you go. This whole process took me about an hour and I've been canning for 22 years. So, I would have gone a lot faster without showing what's going on. So I don't want to deter you from going ahead and trying jams and jellies. What I would tell you though, is there's a good reason to do this type of work for yourself. It isn't because jams and jellies are so expensive, although you'll find some are way overpriced. Let's try to remember each time we do something that has a history, that there was an original reason for it. People used to have their own gardens, vegetables, and they were lucky to find some wild fruits if they hadn't cultivated them themselves. And a way to keep that flavor through the year instead of the short few weeks that the fruit is around or the vegetable is around, they would preserve it. And that's why we do it, is to preserve something that's from our garden with a flavor that simply can't be beat and can't be found in most store varieties. They've gotten away from the freshness, even though of course they'll say it's fresh, because I bet you it is. But what variety have they gone through to find the best tasting strawberry? Which I'm sure you may have done that, just to find something you really like in your own garden garden. Inside the envelopes and on the packages, it'll tell you whether or not that particular pectin is good for sugars, honeys, or other type of sweeteners. So be really careful, read the package, take the time. I know it seems like a lot, but try to get your things on the off-season of canning. That would be November, December, January, and February. 
I say that, look real close. You'll find them in thrift stores and especially estate sales from folks who have moved down in their life and really don't can anymore. I hope you've enjoyed our video today. Like us, subscribe to us. You'll see a lot more canning, a lot more cooking, and hey, even a little bit in the garden. Have a great day. Be a pro.